All right, so welcome to Creative Arts Apothecary. I am your host, Marina Selner, and I am so happy to introduce my guest, creator of willowing.org, Tamara Laporte. Tamara. Hello! <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it is so good to be speaking with you. Tamara Laporte is a celebrated mixed media artist and art teacher who has been running her own creative business since 2008. Her work can be described as mixed media folk art with a focus on magical realism. It ranges from whimsical children's illustrations to a more stylized fantasy art, love, mystery, innocence, hope, spirituality, kindness, and self-connection inspires her artwork symbolism and layering play a big part in her work her paintings often contain healing themes uplifting messages and inspirational poetry she believes that the act of creating art can be a gateway into healing and personal growth often her art classes contain an element of self-development as well as learning art techniques she's deeply devoted to helping people get in touch with their creative fire and would love to help you to to get in touch with the artist in you. Tam is also the inventor and creator of Lifebook, a year-long art course that includes some of the most celebrated mixed media and personal development teachers out there. Deeply passionate and caring for the well-being of the world and its people, Tam works tirelessly to bring uplifting, nourishing, creative, and empowering content to her amazing tribe. Your work this changed so much for me I really yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in the visual arts for as long as I can remember I went to art school for graduate school and and I, I taught at university I taught art and this is and and on top of all of that experience no pressure Pam on top of all that experience you really just changed the what's possible for me so with some seriously, um, seriously. I actually have to really sort of pause and listen, like really take that in because that's a big deal. That feels like a big deal to me. You teach your own style and it's, um, you know, you, you say follow along if you want or innovate if you like. Um, it's just, it's so fabulous. It, it comes from the heart and it's so inviting. Can you tell us more about your work? What kind of work you do? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. No, thank you. I'm really, I like hearing from people who are, uh, this is at or respond to what you said, which is, uh, I like hearing from people who are maybe in an art profession and maybe come from a more traditional background and then have and find value in what I do. Because I often have imposter syndrome and think, uh, if a real person, a real artist or a real therapist or whatever would see what I do, they'd go, no. Because that's why I often say I'm not a real watercolorist because I know that there are kind of rules and regulations as to, you know, traditionally. So it's really nice for me to hear when... I often, I often have therapists uh, tell me as well, actually, this is really helpful. And I'm like, oh, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> but I'm not sort of going against a massive grain of tradition. You know what I mean? And so I'm really pleased hearing that. Thank you. Okay, so my work. <laughs> yeah, yes. So how, how do you, how do you yeah. uh, describe your work? Describe it. So I would say um, that I uh, make art that is kind of whimsical or stylized in nature from a visual perspective, but I very much use my art as a tool for self-connection and uh, having a deeper conversation with myself. So I use it therapeutically, both in the way that simply making art, as many of us know, can be therapeutic and relaxing. Can I say can be because for some people it's stressful if they can't get the eye right, right? In that sense, it can be stressful. But if we um, don't get too attached to the outcome and we sort of just really allow ourselves to get immersed in the creative process, it can be very therapeutic and relaxing and meditative and sort of open up these portals to another state of mind, which I find very therapeutic and uh, yeah, lovely and healing and that's those sorts of things. Um, and also sometimes, so that is the one way of using, utilizing art for healing and kind of self-growth, but I also can do it very intentionally. And what I, by that I mean, I might literally go, okay, I am struggling with XYZ problem or 
any of these, a limiting belief, or I have just had an argument with someone, or I feel small and alone, anything, and I might literally go, okay, I'm going to go to the page and do an, uh, an activity which is very purposeful and intentional around working through an issue. So there's sort of two ways for me how I utilize creativity to support my own healing and growth. And, and then on top of that, I share that process or these processes with people out there who uh, feel called towards it. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, summarize it. <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely. Yes, that's been that's been my experience of your work too. It is. It is like a portal and it's like a like there's there are all these, you know, windows, like a yeah. doorway, and then you have all these prompts that kind of like here's some technique. Oh, mm -hmm. and then what are your thoughts? Oh, what are your feelings? So you can always kind of yeah. you have you're in this dance, this sort of yeah. dance, this conversation right. with yourself, kind of dancing with yourself. Yeah. I like that. So, I like how you so describe beautiful. it. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it as well. Yeah. Especially because sometimes you'll sing, so it really does feel like a dance. It really does feel like a dance. So cool. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. And I do. I enjoy. So another thing that happens is um, because you're talking about the dancing and the singing is that I uh, might start with an intentional thing or not. But I do find that as I create the painting, things come to light as well. And I'll suddenly go, oh, I didn't realize that I'm using a lot of purple lately and the purple blah, blah, blah. And then it relates to this. So that's another thing that um, uh, I really enjoy when I'm kind of letting myself just be in the process where there's just literally, um, you could say a conversation with the page. And it's really just a conversation with yourself, obviously, or your subconscious or your higher self, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's a nice sort of uh, discovery process as well. So you have this course, it's called Lifebook, and you have a book based on it. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> Create your own life book. Thank you. So, um, and you write about how sometimes before you you embark on something new or for a project, you like to set the intention for what you're doing. And that's just so yes. supportive. Yes, it's nice. And particularly on Lifebook, we, uh, it coincides with the beginning of the year. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to do these processes at the beginning of the year, but a lot of the time, Many of us sort of feel that new beginning, you know, the new beginning of the year, any in beginning of the year anyway. So I enjoy very much starting life with, with a very much like the intention setting and uh, mm -hmm. uh, not so much goal, like, you know, not that thing of uh, was it resolutions, uh, not the stringent um, resolution process. For some people it really works, uh, but others are like, oh, no, they beat themselves up for not being able to meet the resolutions that they've set. So we kind of do more sort of an intention setting at the beginning of the year and um uh, with that comes that sort of when you do that, that sort of sense of either you carry it with you into the year and and, and that, that intention setting. And then we also choose the word of the year sometimes, which is actually uh, was this invented by someone called Ali Edwards. So I want to uh, acknowledge her for that. It says Ali Edwards, I think, uh, who uh, de designed that. Uh, but you can choose a word for you. So all these sort of it's real. Um, a, a conscious conscious uh, intention uh, sorry con conscious and sort of very intentional uh, uh, creativity that can support whatever you want to sort of manifest or do in your life yeah yeah so I'm gonna summarize it and stop there <laughs> yeah. if I if I may add to that in, in kindness doing all of that and in self-kindness and oh. the ripple effect Totally. As you said that, I had this real nice relief. Of, of the, so a wash and ripple over. Oh, of course. Yes. I love that, that you bring that up, because that is so important to me, that we do it with gentleness and kindness and compassion and understanding towards ourselves and others, for sure. That's a big thing for me in life, uh, to try as much as possible to move away from judgment. I know that's hard as well, because some people, you, you can have real philosophical discussions about this in life. And I'm not someone who um, is only, you know, I'm not someone who just wants to say, ah, doesn't matter what anyone does. We just need to be kind. That's not kind of the message. It's more, I'm really speaking to the people who are very self-judgmental. And many of us are. And and uh, I get stuck in that, you know. And so I come from a background of uh, fairly, I wouldn't say strict parenting, but very it was very much, a lot of judgment was there. And I internalized that tremendously and it really stopped me from moving on, moving forward in life. But just really, so so it's kind of really about being kinder to ourselves, being gentler with ourselves, not, not berating ourselves, the inner critic, really kind of looking at what the inner critic, how the inner critic is stopping us from moving forward and 
uh, not you know not actually then achieving the things we want to achieve yeah absolutely yeah yeah and what's interesting is i love your motto um maybe you have more but the one that really sticks out is make art and feel happy and yeah. to your point that it's not just oh whatever everything's fine and dandy i mean these these aren't necessarily like easy subjects that you take on but and yet at the same time the the claim of like the 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 reward of the process itself is this is this joy is this happiness so what what's that about how do we how do we address the darkness and and find the light how, how does that work yeah well i um i for myself and i've experienced because a lot of people do think oh shadow shadow work let's say i do uh, i'm not someone who just shies away from scary stuff or painful stuff now on life work we don't go as deep as you might go with a therapist because i can't support people that way so it's kind of um surface level introductions to this these concepts and i'm very careful that people can kind of you know access that uh with the support of friends and family but um uh, what I find or what I've learned in life and is that any all of the scary parts of ourselves when addressed with love and compassion will still perhaps uh, bring up pain and sadness but when you address it with empathy so and mm -hmm. all these things it tends to not be as monstrous as we think it is a lot of a lot of us in life have just learned or been told or feel you know that uncomfortable and scary feelings are too scary to feel and we have to run away and go that way and and by oppressing or neglecting these uncomfortable feelings or experiences oh, as we don't process them they kind of get stuck and locked in our bodies perhaps as trauma depends on the person and uh, they can then because they're sort of set locked into us uh, they'll uh, stop us from being able to be fully happy so by actually addressing them and once again i want to say that it's, it's important that if you have deep trauma you do that also with a therapist and not just life book life book can be used as a really great supplement to this and a healing but not as a, a replacement for it um that there's a great liberation and relief in actually facing the pain and the and it's as i say this as in meaning i'm not still not 100 percent able right for myself to go every day oh there's a painful feeling i welcome you thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm still working on that. So don't get me wrong. I'm not like some sort of Zen master that is amazing at this, but, but I do demonstrate and try my very hardest best on how I meet that, how I meet that and really sitting with it and really being present to the uncomfortable feelings. And then, um, you know, just, just almost following it down the rabbit hole. And usually it isn't as scary as we think it is. In fact, the moment you actually allow a, an uncomfortable feeling to arise, the, the intensity of it lessens almost immediately because it's been heard. And so, yeah, I encourage people to to move towards the kind of shadow or the scarier parts. Not like I say, not if it's huge trauma without any without the therapist that I really want to say, but um, not to do that thing in life where we walk around going, la, 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 la I can't hear you. <laughs> Right, because it's just going to cause more problems. So if we don't face up to the the painful bits, mm -hmm. so you can utilize. And the beauty is that creativity again can really support um, being present to your even your sadness. Let's just call it by sadness. I don't have doesn't have to be deep devastation. You know, you can try that out with kind of uh, experiences that have a slow, small low, like a not a really big um, emotional charge at first and then if you have a therapist you take you can you can do it in, in combination with your therapist as well so i can't remember your question <laughs> i like talking a lot but you said something about how does um make art feel happy yeah oh, i think you definitely addressed it mm -hmm. okay. how how do they come together um yeah. it seems yeah, counter so counterintuitive although my experience tells me that that is the case that moving yeah. through it feeling yeah. into it especially yeah. while being creative yeah. releases it like that That's letting go process it can right. this naturally leads to to this happiness it's it's true That's it's right. not a oh everything's you know sunshine no. all the time it's it's something That's about right. that release is yeah there's so much grace and gratitude found there yeah in when my we experience when we, for sure when we process our stuff there is a, a resolution right and that usually resolves in some kind of happiness joy or uh, even just contentment it doesn't have to be a uh, crazy joy or something but just a a moving uh, away from or a, it's transforming away from 
stuff that uh, keeps you stuck to a liberation and that may result in happiness or joy. And also that, look, the other thing about make art and, and be happy is it is really fun to to play around with the colors and, and, and paint and, and splatter and that sort of stuff and making characters. I actually I put some characters out here just to show because you mentioned you want to share something, you know, make look cute little characters or um, I, have to, I did this one recently, which I love. This is a deer and we did on Lifebook. And uh, it's just so fun to play with watercolor and have the and the mark making. And that's a meditative process. So there's something simply, like I said, about just making art. And if you're feeling stressed, that, that you can channel that into your painting process. It all helps. Uh, apart from if you are stressing about that, you can't do the eye or something. That's a that's a different kind of thing. Uh, but most of the time for most people, creating um, can be really stress relieving and therefore lead to happiness. <laughs> yeah. And you taught me about the the trans transformational power of, of 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 moving through it. Like I, I hesitated at first when I started listening to your videos. I was like, really? So if I write about these difficult feelings and put them in the artwork, they're not gonna bounce back at me. It's like it really gets transformed. It, yes. It's yes. it's kind of magical. Yes, it is, isn't it? And then also, depending on what kind of technique you use, what I love about this one as well is the paint of a collage that you may have done with me. I don't know. But there's one technique where you uh, also symbolically you kind of collage loads of uh, images down either of yourself or of something out of a magazine, and then you paint over it. And the actual painting literally transforms from this collaged piece to a painted piece. And I really enjoy the symbolism that you are working on a transforming something. You write down underneath or you, you basically express what you're trying to transform and then the painting as you paint transforms so you get all these interesting yeah matches and and uh, connections between your own inner world and what's happening on the page and it's really nice yeah yeah so so powerful and fun <laughs> all these great yes. things at the at the same yeah. time and can you say more about lifebook for people who aren't familiar with it Sure. Yeah. So Lifebook is a year long mixed media art course. I've been running it since 2012. I was I was pregnant with my first child while I was thinking the idea up. And so that was 2011 when I started thinking about him, him, her life. And so it's a year long mixed media life uh, art course that's been running since 2012. And it involves myself and between 25 to 30 additional art teachers. And the art course has an underlying personal development focus. So people can come to the course and not, not worry about that. So if it's not your thing, if you're like, I don't want to touch that, or it's not something I want to do through creativity, you can still very, very easily do this course. Um, but if you're interested in learning how creativity can support your well-being, it's also a really good um course for that and it's uh it you get about 80 or so 80 plus mixed media art lessons spread out sprinkled throughout the year and um yeah each um each month so each month has a specific sort of personal development theme and so all the teachers design lessons that are and I, what i like about it is that you get the perspectives from other people as well not just mine i have a couple of racket techniques but other people have, you know you have lots of interesting insights in how they deal with the inner critic or how they deal with stress or how they deal with whatever and they have then um creativity exercises that will include some kind of personal development theme as well and yeah and that's uh that's that's life book i think and i don't know what else i should say about it it also comes with uh this year so over the years it's changed but we have um a few teachers that do specifically uh, focus more or not only like um, Cassie Martin she does a couple of additional sessions that are purely therapeutic so not art but most of it is art with some kind of therapeutic underlying element and um, there's also something called MVC nonviolent communication that my husband shares which again is very loving and kind and supportive of personal development and growth and then what else was going to say about that that's it. I think that's, I think that's a, my, my brain. I was going, I think I had something else to say about it, but that's sort of my summary of it. <laughs> yeah. So cool. It's, it's really special. And you have people doing it, you know, over the years, because each year is a little different. And yeah. that's really yeah. special too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there are new lessons pretty much every year, but I do new lessons every year. I mean, they have similar techniques, but the different characters and whatever. Uh, what is really nice is when I have someone, there's some people, I should find them now because I think even, 
the that have done every year and that is kind of incredible to me because there's people who do about one year on one year off but the the hardcore life because uh i don't know right you know because the longer i go on i want you know eventually someone's going to go okay i've done this for 15 years now <laughs> you know i can wow. see how i'm like, oh, not for the 16th year i uh, should um call like call some kind of like do a call out and see you know who's done it all these years but yeah it's really nice when i get people really taking it uh, all the time <clears throat> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that it, it brings to light the um the role of community in all of this, that it's a that that alone is so supportive and inviting. Yeah. And the community is really great. I love we have set sort of um an atmosphere as well of again, you know, it's not like a course where you get cr very critically marked or scrutinized and analyzed. And I'm saying I'm not saying there's not worth you know, for some people it's really worthwhile and they want to become excellent let's say at their craft and i'm you know that's absolutely understandable for some people but this environment is very much uh, encouraging each other it's not meant to be like let's vote for who loves this painting the most. none of that there's only <laughs> there's only um a, a kind of positive feedback and if someone specifically asks look i can't fix this i please help me critically can you explain um, absolutely we'll give that type of feedback but it's not sort of a course where the emphasis is on Sorry, my lights, <laughs> my, my faces are bright, my lights are flickering and they go on and off. It's not a spooky thing or a ghost. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I was saying, oh, it's the, basically the atmosphere is really welcoming, very, very kind of um, encouraging. And, and, and people are really loving towards beginner artists. And if someone says, I feel really insecure. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. I've, there's so many people that immediately will say, look, I was where you were. Look, and they even will share what they did two years ago and what they did now. And we work on and we talk about not comparing yourself, your, your beginning to someone else's middle or, um, you know, having really great taste, but not being able to quite get there to give yourself time. I talk about um, developing something called what I call creative courage or uh, the f being okay with failing. I want to put that really in inverted commas because I realized at some point as well that um, I, in my past, I've I did not like making paintings I didn't like like when I uh, <laughs> I have not never not had a great relationship uh, with art through, throughout my life so when I was younger um, in my mid 20s I'd say I used to paint a lot and I used to hate the outcome I used to love the process but deeply deeply hate my paintings and uh, so much so that I was like I can't do this to myself because I would get depressed about it and I, you know I equated sort of my worth to how good my I, I perceived my painting to be. And I really hated my paintings, though therefore I hated me. And um, I realized now, if I look back that, uh, well, first of all, I think that was trauma. There was, I have trauma in my background. So I really had to work on what am I doing here? Why am I equating an, a, a physical product to my worth? And then I picked that apart and understand that now. But also there everyone goes through a phase of not liking their art that is normal like the same with if you're learning how to yeah right it's it's not it's normal <laughs> and what we have to learn to do is to build that courage to face a painting we don't like and really analyze why, why am i am i you know if it depresses you you probably do what i did which is oh if i don't make a nice painting i am a shit person which is not true obviously but many people do that because we're kind of again conditioned in life to think that the only worth we have is what we are achieving or what we are able to do and that's not true your your your, your worthiness is always 100 percent. you can't do mm -hmm. anything in your life to ruin your your level of 100 percent worthiness it's always there so i had to work on all that but then i see people uh or other people will talk about that as well that um people tend to give up uh soon they, they see their paintings going oh, this is horrible oh, painful to see it you spend two hours on making a painting the outcome you think is hideous why would i do this to myself so the hardest p phase for an artist is to find the strength and resilience to get through that part if you're learning to do that you you're going to become a great artist as in the subjective but you know you it's like my kid i i, I shared this with the life workers as well who was trying to learn to ice skate and um one of my kids gives up quickly now he has adhd as well and that plays a big role in it but the other one has something in him where he uh, initially felt some embarrassment and shame and, and and 
fell fell down a lot on the ice and people see that as well and in, initially he didn't want to go back but eventually he realized i need to keep going to be able to learn that and so he did the thing of falling down and standing up and falling down and standing up and he didn't let his shame or judgment of others or self-judgment get in the way and that is what i call kind of creative courage or resilience building to the horrible annoying part of where we're not good at something yet and we have to kind of tell ourselves that we are now not good at it and that is actually an important part of this whole thing and if you give up you won't make any art ever that is going to be pleasing to your own eye let's just go you know let's just talk about your own eye rather than other people's eyes there's another thing uh, but if you are willing to learn or really try to go right I spent two hours painting. I think this painting is hideous. I'm going to just put it away. Don't worry about it. I'm going to try again tomorrow. I know it's not easy. Like I said, it's, there might be all sorts of little other voices that goes, why would you even do this? Give up now. All these voices. So like be, becoming really aware of that and mindful and listening out for these voices and go, thank you, voice, but no, thank you. And then keep doing in the work. You will eventually just develop the skill. You'll just go, oh, I now know how to do an eye. And now it looks better and now I'm happier. But I have a, I have a um, handout for this. I can maybe share with the, whoever's listening because I call it, I think it's the second phase. So there's like phases for artists because eventually when you're an artist and you feel, you know, for a long time, you feel like you've done your art and you, you're like liking it. Then a new phase comes where you go, oh, you know, <laughs> you liked it for a long time. And suddenly you start to see all these tiny little discrepancies. You go kind of back to that second phase, but at least you've gone through the previous phases. So you know that you can even do better, even that. And, you know, and it's not about doing better. That's the other thing. You know, mm. for me, it's about enjoyment of the process. And then it's also nice if you make good art, good art. And again, your own judgment or stuff that you enjoy and you'd like to hang up on your wall. Um, I don't know, long, long, long ramble there, but passionate. <laughs> Absolutely passionate. No, it's, just, it's, so, it's so it's so fun to, to, to witness you in this casual setting because we usually have like, you know, like all our supplies around and it's, yeah. it's just. It's a great reminder, you know, you're, you're a person like, you, like us. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you talk about your family and that's, that's all of it's a big part of, you know, yeah. what, what you bring to, to the creativity, which is beautiful. And you've been doing this for, for a while, right? Um, yeah, 2008. How, uh, and uh, online, which is pretty cool. Cause I was, it is cool. I was one of the early cool kids. <laughs> No, no, one, no, no, one, no one's doing it. There were two or three art, online art courses when we did it because YouTube started, I think, in 2004 or two. So there was no one, there was no such thing as being able to watch something online then. <clears throat> so um, I remember I used to have a blog on Life Journal. I don't know if you know about that. It was a blogging platform. And I used to do videos, actually, but I would have to upload it to a server somewhere and then put a link in my blog and say, hey, guys, I did a video. Could you please download it to your machine and tell me what you think of it? That's how I did it then, <clears throat> before there was YouTube and that sort of stuff. And then uh, YouTube came and uh, people started, uh, I was part of a live journal community uh, of art journalists. And that was actually my first um, like introduction to art journaling then, because before that I was mostly doing acrylic paintings only. I didn't do mixed media. <clears throat> And then um, I saw when people were doing time-lapse paintings on YouTube and I was sold. I was like, this is so awesome. I was like so impressed. And then I started doing some time-lapse stuff and some kind of fun little diddly, whatever, YouTube videos. And people then started asking, do you teach? And that was the beginning for everyone of teaching online. Now the whole world and their grandmother teaches online. Then there was nothing, the very little. So I've seen it all develop. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. And also it shows, yeah. you, how, it shows you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ancient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must have been a baby when you started. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's, what's, can you tell us something? What surprised you the most over all these years of doing the kind of work that you do? Surprised me the most. Surprised mm -hmm. me. Uh, uh, well, that's, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think which way to go with that. Like, so surprise or more shock, a shock, like surprise is more positive. But I immediately, when you ask me, I'm more like, oh no, there's the neg negative came to me. Negative in the sense that I, it surprised me how hard it was to run a business. So mm -hmm. because it started for me very playfully, oh, you know, I'm still playful. <laughs> I'm still like that on my videos, if you come. 
<clears throat> even yesterday, literally yesterday, last night I was filming a video going, and so then there's the twiddly little bits, and I thought, oh, that's a fun word, you know, like that's how I teach. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then having, you know, the one of big surprise was that I used to say I run a business, and now not now actually I've changed it again. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then I used to say no, my business is running me. So I didn't realize how once you start i guess i'm not i don't have a, a degree in business whatever something business or not nothing of the kind and i learned as i fell into owning a business that i learned literally every step of the way what it means to run a business and where where you um fall down what the problems are how it starts to run you instead of you it and how you fall into sort of these things of Oh, and I have to pay taxes. All the kind of all the kind of financial difficulties, or the, or employing people. What is that like? Running large groups of people is not a not a not for the faint of heart. <clears throat> so, each of my uh, year, uh, well, I run Facebook actual Facebook groups that have over sort of th nearly thirty thousand members or something. But when we, for instance, the taster event that we've just run was joined by about twenty thousand people, and making sure that there is no big crisis or drama occurring uh is really really uh you have to you have to do that it takes a lot of uh sensitivity and organizationally presenting things in such a way that you don't have that they trigger this group of people or this group of people because the other thing is they start to fight with each other and suddenly it's a big kind of suddenly you find yourself managing problems rather than running an art thing that was a real shock for me and and i only ever bumped into the, these problems as I went along it's a shock surprise it's a surprise <laughs> uh, so those things yeah you know what I mean like I, like I, the, the, <clears throat> I can't think of kind of fun surprises <laughs> more oh shit I, oh no another oh god oh shit you know, this is stuff. Um, I mean I can say like oh look What has been real fun, I'll say that, is um, the connect the how what I love about the mixed media art community and how I know so many artists in my position who are all you know I've either taught on life or another of my courses and everyone is so lovely. So that's not a surprise. I'm saying I'm just saying that's a real f nice thing about the this particular industry that we're in. I think that artists tend to be really quite loving and accepting and. I enjoy people that I don't judge or <laughs> I don't understand tired of judgment. So I enjoy the kind of uh, really kind of accepting, wonderful atmosphere in the mixed media art community. I mean, it, but like I said, it wasn't a surprise. It was, I was sort of expecting that. Um, but yeah, the surprise is really how, how tax or how intense it is to run a, an actual business, which started off as sort of a fun hobby. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't intended to turn into a big business, big, 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 big just the full on. I mean, big by, by, by big, I mean, uh, really like it's taken up a lot of my time. And so then I had to try and find. So in the last two years, I've really done a lot of saying no. Like, I, I, and I don't mean that like I just had to because I'd love to keep helping people and doing all sorts of things. But but I realized that I was just burnt out. So there's a whole learning again also about having to go. And not to even feel un like I I judged myself a bit, but it's ungrateful to say no. I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to be dead and, un and ungrateful. <laughs> so, so, you know, and that's self-care. So that's a really, that's the other mm -hmm. thing. The thing I preach, I have to put into I, into practice. I want to anyway, but I really had to put it into practice, which is the self-care thing and making sure you look after yourself and also after yourself and not be overly um, giving to people to the detriment of yourself giving to people is awesome and you can't do it so that to the point where you are burnt out that doesn't work you see so these sorts of things were all big learnings for me as i as I, and it's all been stumbling through it yeah you know, i don't know if that's what the kind of the question you meant but <laughs> i um, i i had no expectations it's, and um it, it, i really needed to hear that um the business side of the equation um, I, I found myself in it out of commitment yeah. to the creativity and and to the people who it serves. It really like, oh, I'm doing what now? So I've, I've yeah. you know, I've been teaching for 27 years. So I know I've had 25 people in a classroom, 30 people in a classroom. But imagine suddenly 20,000 people. I imagine that becomes something like a whole nother thing, right? Next, next, next level. And um, yes. that's a lot right there. So I, I know a lot of people in the community are also teachers and healers. So I'm, I'm 
certain that reminder for self care and boundaries um, yeah. supports. Yeah, it was really, it was really a thing for me. That I was like, ah, oh. um, yeah. And it's hard. It's hard because you kind of do want to do the things, and then you go, but it's gonna kill me, or at least severely damage me. <laughs> Wild, right? Wow. Yeah, so and it's difficult. This is my last question before I let you go. Um, if, if that's all right. Um, so how do you how do you make time for for your own creativity? And I know the business is an expression of your creativity, but have, have, I'll let you answer that. Yeah. Well, how um, uh, usually I try to plan. So I be, I'm a big on big on making sure that the uh, I have time for the important things. I teach also again on Lifebook. I teach about Colby's prioritizing matrix. I don't. It's very practical and not very romantic. But <laughs> I, I was really Andy, my husband, who is actually has um has, has got experience in sort of management consulting in businesses. He he taught us us on Lifebook and me first. He talked about how we have a tendency to sort of do the urgent and important things in life, <clears throat> and so the important but not urgent things which are spending time with people you know who you love uh, doing your own creativity or hobbies uh making time for cooking these sorts of really exercise these things that are kind of never urgent but very important they don't get prioritized and you can there's a whole like schematic uh, whatever you can like look at it and analyze what you do yourself and i realized i was doing that i used to do this thing of oh my god the emails oh my god everything's so important oh, yeah, work 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 and then by the end of the day and i'd go yeah no i know i need to call my mom but i'll see i'll do it if there's space and time and then i started changing that and going hang on no i need to uh, book in my mom my mom i'm gonna call definitely on a friday on at six o'clock and the, uh, the rest ha now of course if you have a life where everything is always urgent and important you have to also look at why is that happening mm -hmm. and you have to reduce that down so if you like like you might need to say no more so you, you know if you have an issue with saying no you can work on that but really if you're also not great at scheduling and doing the thing of i'm going to only respond to the crises crises whatever the word is <laughs> and you don't get the time for doing the exercise and spending time with your kid one-to-one -one, quality time whatever it is that you want to do because everything else is always more important than urgent so i really made a point of of, of changing that and uh, i'm not always with the art because you asked how do i make um, creativity a priority i'm not always able but i do it so much more since i really understood that i have to make that time for it so i literally just go today is a day where i only make art or in the afternoon or whatever the time is that those two hours are going to be art for myself uh, and then i always regret that i do it only for myself meaning why did i film that people love it i couldn't <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, right. like i did this oh i did this one recently this one oh thank you it's a re recent painting and i did that fully for myself just sitting down finally yeah. had some time and i thought yes no this i need i could do work instead but i went no i'm gonna make this part because also i need to or even if i didn't do it for self-care but i do uh, i need to develop my own ideas and just want to hang out with art on my own rather than it being a teaching thing so i was doing that and everyone went oh my god it's so great will you teach it and then i went <laughs> okay and then i did actually <laughs> I did another lesson, and now there is mm. a lesson. But at least the first time I did it was for me. But oh. yeah, I could have just filmed it, and then I didn't have to redo it, and I could do a voiceover. Anyway, um, yeah, so I kind of just prioritize it, just, and I say just, and I know that that's much easier said than done. A lot of people will be like, well, how do you do that? Particularly in this day and age with, like, the external situation with COVID and the the politicians and all that sort of stuff, and, you know, having to raise children in this world and feeling stressed in general, I'm not in any way claiming that it's just easy to make time for your hobbies and you're, you're not important, and, uh, sorry, the not urgent and, and important stuff. However, you could, it could also be that you have behavior that's, so it's, you know, like, see what I'm saying? Cir circumstantially, it can mean that you can't make time for yourself and that's totally understandable and don't berate yourself for it. But it could also be that you, let's say, like I say, have a hard time saying no to people. And so you can look at what what is there for me that means that I just, I just want to be people pleasing because I think that they won't love me. These sorts of things. If you can work on those sorts of things, you might be able to go, "Hey, I love you so much, and I really need some time on my own this evening." Um, so I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have to do. You know what I mean? So you, there's also there's basically two factors there. Of course, circumstantial and uh, outside of your control, and then there's pro possibly behavioral things or or planning methods you can employ that and help you prioritize these important things because they're very important. We we know that if you don't 
give it um, attention to spending time with loved ones, your art or your hobbies and exercise and just relaxing, sleeping enough. If you don't do that, it's going to become a problem, right? We know that it will turn into urgent and important. Mm. Then you're suddenly going, shit, I have to <laughs> do this, you know, but you want to prevent it from going to that box. You want to do that like brushing your teeth. You mm. know, it's self-care. That's the thing. It's self-care. It should be a priority. And it's not just a luxury or a or a nice to have. Again, circumstantially, the external out of your control things means that sometimes you can't. But if it is in any way you can prioritize it uh, and looking at your reasons why you might not be prioritizing it, I would definitely recommend doing that. Anyway, I'm advising again. You asked me how I do I do it. Well, I do it like that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing. Thank you for the, the work that you do, uh, for all the inspiration, really. It's uh, such a pleasure to connect with you. And for our audience, um, the video will link to your your work and, and more information about you. Um, and any, any parting words, Tam? No, I think I've, <laughs> I've said a lot. Well, no, just be kind to yourself. It's my part. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. Be kind to yourself and Thank you so much. Uh, have a great rest of your day and uh, remember to, to keep it creative whenever possible. Um, Sam and everybody, all the best. Okay. Thank you for having me. Bye.